USA Ultimate is proud to present the 2013 USA Ultimate National Championship. It's the women's final here this afternoon in Frisco, Texas. Number three seed scandal out of Washington, D.C. takes on the seven-time defending champion Fury from San Francisco. Yesterday, Washington, D.C. picking up a win over Seattle Riot. They controlled that game the entire way. And San Francisco with a win over Austin Showdown. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. My cousins and former Wake Forest Ultimate Captain Evan Lepler. The story here is clear, Evan. Can the seven-time defending champion Fury be dethroned? It's going to be really interesting. If Scandal plays as well as it did yesterday to shock Riot 15-7, Washington, D.C. has a chance. But it's going to be really tough to duplicate that performance against a team in Seattle that really had not been tested throughout the weekend until yesterday. Seattle didn't handle it well. D.C. was great behind a slew of great performers. Well, the storyline always seems to be Fury and Riot, but now Scandal is trying to throw its name into the mix with Mike Lepresti and Alex Gesquier at the helm. They're going to need another big performance like they had yesterday. Like you said, can they get a repeat? And Sandy Jurgensen, they're going to need a big game from her with her speed and her height. Scandal's been a rising program for a few years now. They've been trying to rise into that top tier. San Francisco has been at the top for a long time. But Jurgensen, a dynamic player in the air, arguably the best defender in the women's game, but unbelievable at reading the disc deep. This is just one of her great defensive plays from yesterday, really disrupting what Seattle Riot wanted to do all game long. Fury, a long-standing powerhouse in the women's division under the advisory of head coach Matty Sang, who was with the World Games team earlier this summer. Their go-to, their stalwart is Alex Snyder. Hands down, everybody will tell you she's the best player in the women's game. Well, she touches the disc more than anyone. When she's on the field, she'll touch it about 20% of the time. The stats aren't overwhelming. She may not have the goal. She may not have the assist, but she will trigger the offense every time down the field. She'll be central to everything for San Francisco Fury today and this is a matchup the two coaches the two coaches on the U.S. World Games team Alice Gesquier was the head coach Matt Sang the assistant coach they go head to head with a championship stake on the line seven time defending champion San Francisco Fury will defend their crown against Washington D.C. scandal when we come back Welcome to the USA Ultimate National Championships, the third and final leg of the Triple Crown Tour, Ultimate's highest level of competition. Everyone's invited. The USA Ultimate National Championships are presented by the Discraft Ultrastar 175 Sport Disc, the official championship disc of USA Ultimate since 1991. USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of ultimate in the United States. To find out more about the sport of ultimate or where to play in your community, visit www.usaultimate.org. A perfect day for Ultimate in Frisco, Texas, as we get set for the Women's Championship here at the USA Ultimate National Championships. Fury taking on Scandal, and Fury has won every women's title dating back to 2005 when it was Riot that took the crown. So those have been the two dominant teams, Fury and the former Boston team, Lady Godiva, well, both with nine titles. So it's the high challenge today for Scandal to try and knock down Fury, which we see here in the blue and white. Nobody's ever won eight in a row. Ness Fajardo, one of the captains, number 27 on the line with Lakshmi Narayan, number 66. Lauren Kanamaru looks like she's going to pull. Okay, here we go. The Fury in blue will begin on defense. First to 15. Halftime at 8. Self-officiated with four well-qualified observers. DC Scandal will begin on offense. First trip to the championship game for Scandal. Alex Gesquier. The head coach of Revolver on the men's side last year. Lost in the championship game with the men. Won it with the Revolver team two years ago and three years ago. And again, the two coaches for these teams work together to bring USA gold in Columbia this summer. Going head to head today, just like they did at the US Open in July. That was a good game, but Fury finished on top to win the U.S. Open crown in Raleigh this past July 7th. 
Immediate chance for a break here for Fury as they go toward the end zone on their first possession. And in the back corner, catch is made by Lakshmi Narayan. But this is going to be coming back. It looks like a foul called or a pick called. Back of the throw. It was in the air, so it stays there. The back. Oh, still a heck of a catch by Narayan with Jurgensen approaching from behind. This doesn't count, but Narayan timed the lead perfectly. <laughs> Amy Hudson defending. Ness Fajardo, the lefty. Lauren Casey, a long time great player in the women's game as well. You know, Fury, very similar to Revolver. You know, Alex Snyder might be the most talked about player as the turn happens, but Fury relies on a system and they're very, very balanced. A lot of different contributors helping them get back to the finals in 2013. Both teams exchanging turns here on this first Stay possession. Over. Disc now with Ness Fajardo. And if you're to make a real apt comparison for Fury, we talked about this before the start of this game. It's probably a, a revolver comparison on the men's side. Yeah, that they are so well back. balanced and don't rely on just four or five big weapons. They have the big weapons, but they don't go to them, you know, out of necessity. They play within the system. Three on one and a D from Maggie Rudin to get over and knock that disc out of bounds. And she wanted the upline cut from the handler. But the cutter just halted. Right upon release. Wins taking charge of that disc. Look out with it in the end zone. And remember yesterday, as Scandal picked up a win over Riot, the Fury first turn. point of that game was a Callahan grab by Allison Maddox. You know, Fury has started this game in a similar sloppy fashion to the way Seattle Riot did yesterday. Can Kath Radcliffe and Scandal capitalize? This is Anne Mercier, the former Capitals player, native Canadian. A big addition to this Washington, D.C. team this season, one of their best handlers. And she's probably the closest thing that Washington has to an Alex Snyder. Good things typically happen when the disc is in Mercier's hands. Long time mainstay on the Toronto Capitals. Mercier, an Ottawa native in her first year with Scandal, helping them get as far as they've ever been here at Nationals. Call. Very quickly, back-to-back -back picks called. With Mercier holding the disc two yards out, what has been a long first point. With a bunch of turns, both of these teams getting used to the wind. Mercier with a backhand flip gets the scoring started as she connects with Alika Johnston. Scandal able to hold serve. Alika Johnston, the goal scorer here, just 19 years old. And she'll be out there pretty much every offensive point as a handler. She's the youngest competitor here in the championship game. There's no one else under 21. You know, Fury just has a few new players this year, but primarily the same pieces back from last year's championship team. And last year, Fury winning for the seventh time. The longest run of championships in this sport. Boston's death or glory on the men's side won six in a row from 94 to 99. But Fury again, you can see they haven't really been tested against Boston's brute squad in the quarters. A decent game, but Fury was never really in too much trouble. And just, they just got off to a great start in the semis against Showdown. You know, Fury takes a 6-1 lead. With their consistency, oh, they're not going to blow that now. lead. And that's that's why it's really important for Scandal to get off to a good start. Here's Octavia Pan. We talked a lot about her yesterday. Played for the U.S. World Games team. She's got to throw that into the wind, hence a very short pull. We're talking national team competitors in this game. Octavia Payne, Sandy Jurgensen for Scandal. Alex Snyder and Cree Howard for Fury. And it's Jen LaRoche for the Fury score. That was very quick on a short pole, creating a short field. 
Alika Johnston, the youngest player for Scandal with the first goal. And now Jean LaRoche, the second oldest player on Fury, 34 years young. French-Canadian cutter. And Fury holds serve on its first offensive try. And Evan, you mentioned the high caliber of players in this game. Don't forget from the World Games team on the Fury side, Anna Nazarov was involved in that as well. Yeah, one of the best players who didn't go down to Columbia. Dynamic deep threat, very fast, great competitive fire. Nazarov, number 33 in blue. Cree Howard was down in Columbia. She'll pull here for Fury. San Francisco 9-1 in championship games as a program. Club founded back in 1997. The first Nationals win was in 1999. They had zero tournament wins before that year. Of course, back in 2008, the third of their championships, they overcame a 10 to 1 deficit against Seattle Riot in what was either the greatest comeback or perhaps the greatest choke in the history of Ultimate here at the championships. Certainly depends who you ask. And a great comeback from Fury's perspective. Down 10 to 1, and they won 15 12. Scandal turnover. Unfreed turfs that throw for Washington, D.C. Here's Nazarov starting the possession, and it's taken away. The turn and picked over by back. Kath Ratcliffe. She flings it deep and a little bit too long. Trying to hit Johnston again. Nancy Sun will pick it up for Fury. And he'll turn it his back One over. of the two. One of the two captains, along with Ness Fajardo, able to walk it up to the front of the end zone. So she'll be 70 yards away from the opposite end zone. The field slightly narrower than a football field, but plenty of space to create opportunities in the seven on seven game. There's a turn, Mercier knocks it away, and creates a short nine yard distance from her spot to the goal line. You know, Mike, obviously it's early and anything can happen, but I haven't seen Fury had this many first throw turnovers ever. And Scandal capitalizes. Unfree to White, 2-1 Washington, D.C. Alicia White has West Coast roots. Now 31 years old, played at UC San Diego. Mercier picks up, guarded by Nazaroff. That's a great matchup. Low release flick. And then Unfreed finished it into the end zone for White. You can just tell when you watch a handler like Mercier, she's so calm with the disc, and she's able to release so low to the ground that even a great defender like Nazarov, very unlikely to get a hand block. There's number 89. Alex Gesquier felt very fortunate to have Mercier on the squad this year. As Washington, D.C. gets set to pull here, one of the interesting parts about their defensive line is two of the players they've got on there, two of the best in the women's game. Octavia Payne, who stands at the front, she's ready to pull, and Sandy Jurgensen, number 37. Open Those are two of their all. most talented players, and they utilize them on the defensive end, which really helps their D offense. Yeah, they're pure athletes, Payne to pull. Not only is Jurgensen tall at 5'9", but her arm length and wingspan belies that height. Asked to describe her game in one word, she says fast. And another first throw giveaway from Fury. The wind looked like it forced that turn. Not too much pressure. It was man-to-man -man defense for Washington, D.C. Jesse O'Connor, Allison Maddox now with the disc. We'll see what the D.O. can do here. 
The scandal tries to get a break. It was Allison Maddox that had a huge first point down near this end zone yesterday. With a Callahan on Gwen Ambler's throw to get the scoring started for Scandal. Sadler with the disc, straight up mark. Stall count rising. She goes end zone. Snyder there for the easy D. That was a desperation toss. Scandal turnover. Actually, don't, don't have a stop. 2-1 Washington, D.C. out in front of San Francisco. A and a big ahead. weekend here in Frisco, part of the USA Ultimate National Championship weekend and the Ultimate okay. Hall of Fame. Okay. And Suzanne Fields, a member of the class of 2004, now joining us up here in the booth. Welcome. Check. Thank you. It's really great to be here. Well, we're very glad to have you to be able to watch this game. As Snyder unleashes deep downfield, and that's a connection. San Francisco right on the doorstep. Evan and I had the pleasure of running into you uh, a couple nights ago while we were watching pool play and hearing about your story of playing ultimate that you got started playing back in 1977. And, and if you could retell us that story that players didn't even keep score at that time. No, it was a really wonderful introduction to the sport. I was at UMass Amherst uh, getting my master's in public health and I happened to be walking through the common area and I saw some people throwing a disc. And they invited me to play, and uh, it was mixed ultimate. And yeah, instead of keeping track of score, we just rated the game on one to a hundred on how much fun we had. I imagine the score was probably close to a hundred a lot. Uh, it was like 98, 99 <laughs> most of the time. Chatting with Suzanne Fields, a member of the Ultimate Hall of Fame, reading about the many accomplishments in your career throughout Ultimate. Now it's obviously a big age for the sport being televised, sponsorships being picked up all around. But you were a part of getting the first ever Nike sponsorship for an ultimate team. How did that come about? Well, I was working with Buzz Laughlin, who was the founder of the Boston Frisbee Club. And uh, and we just decided it was time. Uh, we approached Nike. And um, they were receptive. It was a sport they really hadn't heard of. And we just asked for whatever they would be willing to donate. And we ended up with Astro Grabbers and shirts and clothes. I mean, it was just really that great introduction to sponsored sports. It was great. Another turnover as Payne tried to punt it deep, and then Octavia Payne with the D. Okay, with Suzanne, the D. you were inducted into the Ultimate Hall of Fame in 2004, the inaugural class. How did you find out you were inducted, and what did that mean to be a part of that? It was kind of funny. I think I got a phone call. Yeah. Um, Out of the blue? Well, I had heard that this was happening, and they wanted some background on my ultimate career so I filled out this you know our player candidate questionnaire to kind of think back well what did I do and when and so having to go through that process was uh, enlightening in and of itself to really reflect back on my years in the sport and and the folks that I've encountered across the way it's been really great and still is we're watching this fury team from San Francisco trying for its eighth straight title but we go back to 1981. You're playing with Boston Ladies Ultimate, and you won a championship that year. But you were really instrumental in developing the women's game on a national level, correct? Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, Boston Ladies Ultimate, um, Louis Mahoney Cohn, was the person who got the team going and had to convince me to not play with the men's team, Boston Aerodisc, and join the women. And um, once she helped me see the light, that was it. It made all the sense the when you, when you watch teams like Fury and Scandal go head-to-head -head here, what goes through your mind about how this game has evolved over the last 30 years? I think the things that are most significant to me are the, the depth and breadth of training that women do now. Um, I had the opportunity to spend a few minutes talking with Matty Sang and just asking him about his coaching philosophy. And just having a coach is a major development, and it is so so critical um, on the, you know, the, the thinking part of, it, of the game. Oh, it's not oh. all strategy, it's emotional. And Fury realized more than anybody the importance one, of a coach. One, one. No Matt Sang no is eighth year as a coach and he's going for his eighth straight championship. So clearly his philosophy has paid off. 
Oh, definitely. I, I got a real um, kick. I was kind of listening into one of his pregame talks, and he pulls out the box. And on this box is kind of his a breakdown of the team they're going to play. And that box just goes with them from field to field and then just gets tossed at the end. I thought he should bronze it for each title. Alex Snyder to the end zone to Derek Clancy for the score, evening things up at 2-2 as we chat with Suzanne Fields, a member of the inaugural Ultimate Hall of Fame class in 2004. I don't want to say to reflect on your career because you're still a very active player, but of the things you did toward the beginning when you started playing Ultimate, what is something that you remember most fondly about when you got involved with the game? Um, I think for me in the early days, it was a little frustrating to play a sport with some women who were not experienced team athletes. But what was most rewarding was to see what each individual got from that involvement, that they got confident, um, that they became athletes if they didn't think of themselves as athletes before that. And just the teams themselves. I mean, it's, it's a team sport. Individuals are just Ten members seconds. of a team and seeing that come to pass. We're looking at Alex Snyder, who's one of the greatest throwers in the game today. Matt Sang walks across the field. 20 seconds to fall, you have a hand. When you walk around and see someone like Alex Snyder, do you remind you of yourself at all? I definitely pay attention to the throwers um, because that's what I was better known for. I didn't play a heck of a lot of D. So yeah, I definitely <laughs> pay attention to the throwers, but I completely appreciate the defensive players. Watching Octavia Payne, um, she's just a phenomenal defensive player. Um, I watched Claire Chastain on the Phoenix team play, and she just blows my mind. Let me ask you this. How soon after you started playing did you feel comfortable laying out and just throwing your body around? Well, <laughs> when the Rude Boys, um, when we would practice at the MIT field, we actually had 7 a.m. dive drills. So it was... That's fantastic. We practiced that. So. <laughs> I mean, it's a little early. I prefer like 11 a.m. diving drills, yeah. but still, that's fantastic. 7 a.m.s. Alicia White right across the goal line finds Alika Johnston giving Washington, D.C. a 3-2 lead. One of the beauties of this sport, Suzanne, is that you can play for so long. You're still playing. What's your current involvement in the sport? Well, I play on a mixed team um, from Maui called the Hucking Fowleys. You should say you do live in Hawaii, oh, which yes. makes us all of all of us <laughs> jealous. I live on the island of Maui. And in Hawaii, we have two significant tournaments, um, Hopu Kaleva, which is the mixed tournament in coming up November uh, Veterans Weekend, and then Kaimana, which is an open and women's tournament. And for the Kaimana tournament, I play with a team called Freshly Squeezed. But on Maui, I get to play two or three times a week, um, goal to mitt, if we don't have enough for ultimate. So yeah, it's kind of what keeps me running around? Because I don't like gyms. I'd rather be doing something. It's just unfortunate that you don't typically have nice weather to play in. Oh, the weather is so <laughs> awful. <laughs> does it ever rain out there? Yeah, it does, actually. We do have seasons. Okay. Um, you really can see differences in the vegetation. Um, there's the rainier 20 seasons. 20 seconds to fall. And drier seasons, yeah. Another member of the Ultimate Hall of Fame is Nob Rauch, who's a president of WIFDIF and has played a big part in gaining that provisional recognition for ultimate for a possible inclusion into the Summer Olympic Games. What do you see as the next big step for the sport of ultimate? You know, that's a really good question. I think in my heart, I'd like to see the youth, the focus on youth continue and be ever more strong. Um, I know that um, the goal of USAU is gender equality, and I think we still have a lot of work to do on that, but I think it's getting way better. Um, so I'd like to see um, you know, a continued focus on women's and definitely stepping it up on the youth. Suzanne, it is a great pleasure to have you here. Great to meet you, and uh, thanks for all that you've done for the sport. Thank you. It's been a pleasure joining you. Suzanne Fields, a member of the Ultimate Allison Hall of Fame class of 2004 and a pioneer on the women's side of the game. A great pleasure to speak with her. And if you want to see her bio, you can find that online, usaultimate.org, in the Hall of Fame section. 3-2 Washington, D.C. scandal leading San Francisco's riot. Or rather, Fury, I should say. And so Fury will pick up the turn here right on the goal line, looking to tie. Another turn. This has been a very sloppy early going. Yeah, it really has. Uncharacteristic mistakes from Fury. 
and some unforced turnovers. They just haven't had the crispness to their throws. We talked about it during the mix final, Mike. You know, Scandal has played on this field. They've experienced some of the wind tunnels and jet streams on this field as Payne unleashes one for Jurgensen. Hits are about eight yards shy of the goal line. Fury, on the other hand, is not. They played in a different field yesterday in their semifinal. So just getting used to this playing surface today. And Scandal with a break to go up 4-2. Ito to Jurgensen. Sandy Jurgensen, perhaps the biggest deep threat on either side. Well, not a great throw, but Payne gave Jurgensen a chance to make a play. It's nice to be tall. It's nice to have long arms. And the lefty hits Ito. One more throw for the score. A little give and go from Sandy Jurgensen, who has just unbelievable speed and athleticism. She was a varsity track and field athlete at Wisconsin. In addition to playing for the Wisconsin Belladonna squad, ran the 400. A lot of weight and strength training throughout her athletic career. And, and you know, similar to Bo Kittredge, she's probably just a different type of athlete than what you typically see in the women's game. I mean, in the, her combination of size and strength, the fact that she's lefty is a little bit of an advantage for her. And she's not nearly known as a thrower, but she does have pretty good throws with her left hand. Evan, I want to go back to the beginning of that possession and the huck from Opie Payne. We saw that a lot from her yesterday. She used her pivot foot sometimes to step out of bounds and go downfield. Nobody ever came up to her and they really left her open, making that throw a lot easier for her. She has tremendous field sense, and you know she has led this team to an undefeated run here at Nationals. Their toughest test was in the first game on Thursday when they were down nine to five against Denver's Molly Brown. I think all along you sort of expected Scandal, the three seed entering the weekend to come back and win that game, which they did. Gotta say, though, in pool play, it was a lot of fun to watch a young Molly Brown team huck it all over the field. No question about it. They shot it deep. Here's an interesting dynamic that you may not have thought about. You know, Matt Sang is an assistant coach for the World Games team. And I was talking with Alex Gesquier. He said that, you know, Matt Sang just brings a mental toughness to the table. Alex actually told me, quote, I learned that beating Fury is much harder than I thought it was. And he learned that after coaching against Matt Sang. But there's another break for Scandal. Jesse O'Connor lays out lefty grab. Look out. Scandal did it yesterday with the upset of Riot. And they've got it on their mind again. Sandy Jurgensen, OP Payne, Alex Gesquier may have learned some mental toughness from Matt Sang because Fury's teams are always so mentally tough. And now Washington, D.C. bidding for its first title. Up 5-2. This is the biggest deficit that Fury has experienced this weekend. And that's the benefit of having O.P. Payne and Sandy Jurgensen on the D-line for Washington, D.C. Jurgensen gets the turn, paying the assist to finish off the point. To have great offensive attackers on the D-line creates so much trouble here for yesterday, Ryan, and today, Fury. Very well balanced, inter interchangeable pieces. Good offensive players, but also good defensive players. And you know, the handlers are also, for the most part, good cutters. You know, Alika Johnston, primary handler, has two scores already. Mike Lepresti out on the field. Some last-minute instruction for the Washington, D.C. squad. They lead 5-2. First team to eight brings us to halftime. Lepresti in his second season coaching the Scandal team. Played at Pittsburgh in the early 2000s. Coached the Maryland women. And he's been a big part of creating a framework for Scandal to become one of the best. Lepresti and others helped to create the framework. Alex Gesquier helped to further define and refine the framework. And as Alex Gesquier told me last week, in his year coaching the team, he's done almost nothing to redefine Scandal's strategy. 
but by trying to implement some of his mental attitudes to their team, obviously he's a longtime champion. It's made a big difference. He also said that his involvement was not quite as pronounced until after the World Games were over. Jenny Fay, underrated cutter for this defensive team. Another chance for a break. Maddox with the disc, marked by Lauren Kanemaru. She's got to get rid of it here. Uncontested foul, stall count at one. They move back up field. Jenny Fay, she forced a turn, going for Opie, and too far. Even good footwork there wouldn't have been able to secure a goal. Turn. To pick up for Perry. And here's a great defensive matchup. Payne on Snyder. A little bit of over pursuit there. Scandal needs to recover defensively. Snyder's got it, forced home. Up line to Narayan. Now Desmond. Layout bid for the D. Kimberly Beach gets right back up. Heck of an effort from Beach. The oldest player on the field today at 41. Oldest and certainly one of the toughest. Long point for Fury, punctuated by a score. Snyder punches it in. Alex Snyder in number San Francisco Fury's in good shape with Alex Snyder in charge. When she's triggering the offense near the goal line, good things will happen for the seven-time defending champs. That's a familiar throw. Blair Desmond catching the score, so it's now 5-3, Washington, D.C., leading San Francisco. And of Alex Snyder, the admiration for her is universal throughout the sport, but one of her teammates, Ness Fajardo, says that she helps to push and make everybody on the team better, which is a big part of why Fury has been so successful. Alex Snyder, one of the captains of Team USA, along with George Stubbs of Boston's Ironside. Snyder won the Callahan Award in 2006 with Colorado. Now 30 years old, and you know Matt Sang puts it very simply. He says, she's the best handler in the world. Nothing spectacular about that throw, but absolutely as solid as can be. From anybody who knows both Snyder and Matt Sang, you get the sense that they get along very well. Whenever you see either one of them, undoubtedly there's a smile on each of their faces. The thing that strikes me about Matt Sang is his positivity. You know, it's hard to believe he could get really angry at his team. I'm sure there are times in practice where he needs to light a fuse, but he has this unique leadership, which is almost 100% positive. And when you ask others about Matt saying, they talk about the mental toughness he brings and just the calming influence he provides. Mercier. She's got it about 15 yards out straight away. Nice job on the mark there by Snyder to cut off the 
backhand break that Unfreed wanted. Here's Kath Ratcliffe. Breaks the mark, and no call. So a turn, and it goes back to San Francisco. Yeah, credit that defense to Kayla yeah, Jurgensen. No relation to Sandy Jurgensen for scandal. I'm not sure if she got a piece of that, but she certainly forced the thrower to lean out further than she was comfortable. And there's a great catch from Cree Howard downfield. And Howard just dumps it a little too short for Schneider. So a turn, and it's back with worse field position, but now possession for Washington, D.C. Now you have Snyder guarding Mercier. Alika Johnston. This is where the possession stalled earlier for Washington, D.C. Timeout call from Scandal. Yeah, right, right, right. Call timeout time from Scandal. Scandal. Critical point here for Washington, D.C. with a 5-3 lead. Keep in mind, they're trying to unseat a seven-time defending champion. The possession stalled out here last time down before they picked up a turn on a short throw from Snyder looking down at the other end. So here's the road to the finals. San Francisco yesterday with a win over Austin Showdown. And these were the top four names you heard churned about throughout the course of the weekend. Washington, D.C. with the upset win over Seattle's Riot, controlling that game from start to finish. Both games 15-7. So Fury trying to win every title since 2006. And Scandal from Washington, D.C. looking for its first. Once bracket play began, Fury took down Nova. Brut squad from Boston, Austin Showdown, and now Scandal from D.C. here in the finals. Washington Scandal beat Raleigh's Phoenix. And then a very tight game coming from behind to beat the Capitals from Toronto. Taking down Fury, yes, uh, Riot yesterday and trying to take down Fury today. Kath Ratcliffe finds Anne Mercier Perhaps unexpected, a recipient of a score, mostly a handler, and it's Mercier with a diagonal cut and an easy finish. And the defender did not expect that cut. You see number 77, Carolyn Finney chasing. Beaten up line, a good play call from Lepresti and Gesquier. Throw right on the money, near the front cone. Well, Mike, there's no way around it. This is a brewing upset right now. You know, Scandal has set the tone that it needed to set. Can it continue? Well, Fury's gonna need to raise its game. And, and it's a test for San Francisco because all tournament long, San Francisco's been on cruise control. And that's not really an insult toward them or a critique, it's just a reality because they've naturally been so much better. And we talked to some people who thought that Seattle Riot wasn't ready to take that punch, that scandal through yesterday, going up three, nothing in the first half. Riot never really recovered. All the way to ball for scandal. In a way, it can be said that it can be painful to be too good in this tournament. Strong wind has affected poles today, has affected short throws as well, but especially for Octavia Payne at the bottom of your screen in white as she gets set to pull. They've been shortened, sometimes out of bounds. You don't want to argue that it's better to lose, but, you know, Mike Payne, the coach for Revolver, said, you know, sometimes we'll sacrifice victories during our season to try to get our younger players' experience. And it is good to be tested, and that's why it's so important to remain in the pro flight as, you know, the years 
roll on. If you're in the pro flight, you're guaranteed the top competition. Well, Evan, that's an interesting look at the way that uh, USA Ultimate Nationals were reformatted this year is that pool play on Thursday changed a little bit. There was a thought that, oh, well, you can just lose on Thursday and it's not going to matter, although it does affect seeding. And that's another turn back and forth. But Thursday proved to be very important. There was a lot of conversation before the national championships that teams might throw games away on Thursday. Well, all 12 teams across the three divisions that went undefeated or finished as the number one seed in their pools on Thursday went on to the semifinals. So that tells the story. Thursday's success, at least this year, correlates with Friday's success. Second straight huck for Jurgensen. All she's got to do is turn around and put it up for Sarah Ito. Unfamiliar territory right now for San Francisco Fury. A scandal has broken out. And in your Beautiful throw for Jurgensen. Great job boxing out Cree Howard. Probably a little bit more under that throw than Jurgensen would have liked, but Lisa Pickathley coming from the backside, just not in time. You know, Pickathley is a name that we called quite often at the U.S. Open in Raleigh, but today, now 10 points in, she has not been a factor. She was huge in both the semifinal against Showdown and the final game against Scandal in Raleigh. Pekethi, one of the three rookies on this Fury team. Sarah Ito, a veteran, played collegiately at George Mason. Wouldn't be a sporting event in North Texas without some cowboy cheerleaders, or are those cheerleader imposters? Down seven to three. We know that Fury goes year by year. They don't think about we're playing for our eighth straight title this year. But do you think there's a little bit of panic setting in on that sideline? I don't think panic is the word because they're so experienced. But there's certainly some uncertainty being in a spot where they haven't been all weekend long. You know, Fury isn't a team that really has had to try to push it to the next gear because their consistent system Gets the job done. A little bit of a zone look. We'll see how long Scandal stays with it. This is a tough upwind point. As you saw the flags, the breeze has picked up over the last 15 minutes or so. Four-man cup from Scandal. Scuba over the top. Tough throw into the wind, but complete for Lauren Casey. And the cup. Works to perfection. The zone defense forces a turn, a chance to take half and a break. O'Connor holds the disc and a pick called in the end zone. Two counts to go. Take two. Coming five. 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 Back to Payne. And Opie wants a timeout. They've used their second and final timeout here in the first half. A great timeout call, and I'll tell you why. She didn't have anything clear in the end zone, and her teammates were no longer in a clean stack. It was basically just a cluster of bodies, and she would have had to try to force something in there. The timeout will allow them to reset into an alignment that is conducive for end zone offense. And would not be shocked here if we saw a similar handler cut like the one Ann Mercier delivered out of the previous timeout. This San Francisco team hasn't even been challenged through many of their seven titles. They've won nine total championships. They've only lost once in the final. Seattle Riot winning back in 2005 before the Fury Rain began. Snyder, Fajardo, Rudin, big parts of this team's history. And they, they really do treat every year as a new season. The their team is incredibly humble and grounded considering seven championships. 
There was never a decision with anybody on Fury where they said not four, not five, not six. They're at seven right now, but if Scandal has its way, it won't be eight. Payne's got the disc. She's marked by Rudin. That hangs high, and Snyder with a great D to knock it out of bounds before anybody in white could grab it. Alex Snyder with Just a tremendous job here. of staying with the disc here by Snyder. Oh, and another turn. Dropped to the first pass by the captain, Fajardo. Payne. Waiting for the observer's signal. Looks like the Fury player called a foul, and that might be why Quinn Farrenwald was that open. Okay, the call is foul, so we send it back or come to me. Um, I can guess okay, the call. Is foul. Yeah. I'm gonna call yeah. Yeah. Foul. Okay, the call is foul. Yes, that's a foul into her. The disc is back. Like a contested foul. We are where we are. Now the score. Disc can go back to OB. Great example of how Fury has just not been in sync. Fajardo, usually reliable. It's a nice throw from Payne. You can see how fired up she was. Another chance to do it here. White flick to O'Connor. Now back to Payne on a wobbling disc. She makes the catch. Jorgensen got tied up there, crossing the end zone with Lakshmi Narayan. And it's a turn, unless there's a call. Foul call in the end zone. Was it a foul? Legs got tangled. I'm not sure you can call a foul there on Orion. Foul coming to me. White initiated contact, not blue. No foul. We're here. Wait, 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 Alex wait. Snyder, who's going to pick up the disc wait. off the turn here, brought up a good question. Well, she was asking if Sandy Jurgensen had a play on the disc, and Sandy basically was like, Are you kidding? Of course I had a play on the disc. Have you seen how long my arms are? But the big part of that decision was the choice to go to the observer. Because it, initially, it sounded like it was just going to be a contest. Narayan said she was going to contest. That would have sent the throw back to the scandal thrower. But by going to the observer, ruling no foul, it's Fury's disc. Scandal setting up the cup. This zone defense forced to turn over on the last possession for Fury. That's a nice throw, but it caught in the wind. That's why they put the cup on. Here's White on the goal line. She goes forehand, OP Payne. And it's 8-3, Washington, D.C., a surprising half. And they take it by five. When that throw was released, it looked like Snyder would have a play. But the wind popped it over her head. And Alicia White to Octavia Payne. It's been a great summer for O.P. Payne. And this D.C. Scandal team getting better and better at the most important time here in Frisco. San Francisco, seven-time defending champion, down big here at halftime. They've got to be feeling very good in that huddle right now about their chances. They've got to get to 15 to take this game. Now, Alex Gesquier, a big part of what Washington, D.C. has done this year. A World Games team 
maybe a little bit familiar with the strategy that Fury's putting on with Matty Sang, his adversary on the other side, the other head coach. And this is a conversation between Matt Sang and the Fury leadership. They're trying to figure out how to combat this scandal energy. Alex Gesquier joining us now down on the sideline, one of the coaches for Scandal. The cup defense there seemed to be a really nice part of your strategy to help force the turn and ultimately get that last point. Right, we like to mix that up a little. Our man has been super effective as well. Uh, mostly the squirrely wind that's out here in these stadium conditions makes it hard to complete, you know, even simple throws. So the more pressure we can put on their handlers and their short throws, the, the quicker we get turnovers. Dutchy, I know you have a lot of confidence in your team, but did you ever expect to be up 8-3 on the San Francisco Fury team? I think I did. I knew what we could do. Uh, I think this is a great case for us, but I knew that this was in us. Alex, when we look at your D-line, you have two of your best players there, Octavia Payne and Sandy Jurgensen. What does that bring to be able to have two great offensive players on that D-line? Well, we, look, we really like to go quick on the turn, especially when Opie can, hit, uh, can get it with a good look to Sandy to go deep. Uh, that quick strike really demoralizes the, the offense, and we get some, some easy short field goals. Uh, uh, I love the feeling of the quick turn. Two seconds later, we've scored, and the whole sideline erupts. Real quick, what will it take to close this out? It'll take grit, a lot of grit and determination. I know Fury and I know Matty Tsang, they're not done. We've got to stick with this. All right, Alex, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Thanks very much. Alex Gesquier, one of the coaches along the Scandal sideline. They're up 8-3 at the half. We'll come back with more from Frisco, Texas in a moment. If you're an upset-minded team, it's a good day to be playing in the USA Ultimate National Championships here in Frisco. Washington, D.C. scandal trying for the upset win over San Francisco Fury. It's 8-3 here at half with Evan Lepler, Mike Cousins. Boy, the wind has played a factor, but the defense and the contagious enthusiasm along the Washington, D.C. sideline mixed in with a little bit and a healthy dose of confidence has been key to them taking half. It's pretty amazing because championships aren't always won by the team that had the best season. Championships are won by the team that peaks at the right time. And, you know, Scandal played its best game of the tournament, its best game of the season, and just dominating Seattle Riot yesterday. I wasn't sure they had it in them to play an even better half, but obviously they did because this first half against Fury to go up 8-3, this has been their best half of the tournament. Do they have one more in them? We'll find out. Well, as we look back, we see how difficult it has been for Fury and how uncharacteristically sloppy they've been with the disc. Well, it was a fast-paced first half that started fairly smooth, but then the turnovers began to pile up. Both teams held serve. We were tied at three, I believe before Scandal really rolled late in the half. You know, I've never seen Fury have this many first throw giveaways. There were some pretty good layouts both ways, but and that was a Fury throw that looked like it was intended for Sandy Jurgensen. To the end zone, a nice layout. The Scandal team fired up. And the zone defense that Alex Gesquier implemented really changed things late in the half. Octavia Payne, Fired up as Scandal takes half 8-3. And he told us that Payne and Sandy Jurgensen have been a big part to huck downfield to her one more pass, and the entire sideline gets fired up. So it's been a, a very big first half, an upset-minded day for teams here in Frisco. When we come back here to Frisco ISD Memorial Stadium, we'll check in down on the Fury sideline, see what they think they need to do to try and make it a comeback in half number two. Scandal of Washington, D.C. takes half 8-3 on top of San Francisco Fury. Their head coach is Matt Sang, and he's with us now down on the sideline. Now, Matt, what do you need to do here in the second half to alleviate the problem of turns? Um, I don't think it's so much uh, the turns. It's going to be ugly either way, but we need to be better about uh, scoring up win and preventing them from scoring up win. Generally, if you score up wind, it's worth two points. So they score two up winters, and therefore, you know, they're up four points. Matt, did, did Scandal do anything strategically that flummoxed you guys in the first half, or was it simply a matter of just too many mistakes? I think it's more mistakes and us adjusting. We haven't been in a win, up wind, down wind game this season yet, so I felt like, 
You know, they play pretty good D, but more we didn't react to the win that well. One of the things about being a dominant program like you guys have been, you're not down at the half very often, let alone down by five. What is the message to try to build this back up? Uh, we still, we don't change the message much. We talk about what we need to improve, and we're going to try to improve it. All right, Matt, thank you. All right, thanks. It's Matt amazing. Zang, it's amazing. Fury. It's amazing how positive he is, even in that situation. Scoring has been led by Alika Johnston for scandal, but they've spread it out throughout. O.P. Payne, Sandy Jurgensen with one. Alex Snyder has had a big part in the assists for San Francisco, but they'll need to keep a better handle on the disc if they want to make it a comeback. Down 8-3 at half. Washington, D.C. scandal will pull here to open second half play at the 2013 USA oh, Ultimate are, National I'm Championships more. Women's Final yeah, as LA. Fury is down Fury. at half, defending champions seven years running. Scandal looking for its first ever title. Octavia yeah, Payne whole, will pull. Now on the other side for Fury, they're going to have to change oh, something. Maddie Sang said that's what they talked about in their huddle. Not no, so much what Scandal has been doing, but what they need to turn around and do here on offense. Who would you say are the players, Evan, that they should really focus on here if they're going to make it a closer game? Well, this is a Fury team that doesn't like to leave its system very much, but you know, similar to the way Boston relied on George Stubbs, their Callahan Award winner from Harvard more in the second half when they were down against Sockeye, I think Fury might need to try to rely a little bit more on its star players. Girls like Alex Snyder and Cree Howard and Anna Nazaroff, and of course they'd love to get Lisa pitt Kathleen involved too. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a lot of I mean. No call. Looks like no call and a turn. Scandal down. So a chance for a break for Washington DC here on the first possession of the second half. Matt Singh made a good point at halftime though. When you score upwind, it's almost like scoring two points because then you have the downwind point next. Huge huck from Payne looking for Jurgensen. She got her feet in bounds. That is a catch for Jurgensen. Oh, what a catch diving, Alicia White. That has been the strategy today. Payne to Jurgensen and White caps off the point. Remarkable footwork from Jurgensen. Tiptoe in the sideline to keep it alive. And leaving the body on the line. A huge haymaker thrown by Scandal to start the second half. From a different angle, we see Jurgensen. Sort of body the defender out of the play. Low release flick. Alicia White hauls it in. You got to think at some point somebody's got to yell from that San Francisco sideline, no huck any time that Payne touches the disc because that's where she's hurt the most. To get a break on the first point of the second half when you're up 8-3 just gives a whole new dose of confidence for Washington, D.C. You know, up 8-3 at the half. One of your thoughts is against a team with a pedigree of San Francisco. One of your thoughts has to be, I hope we don't blow this. But when you get that first break, the mindset changes. They're only six away from their first title. And Fury is frazzled. Fury turn. Bugler marked by Snyder, O'Connor clutching.
Payne goes down, tripped up, running step for step with Castle Cinecrope, and she calls was a foul. It, was it contested? Did you call yes, it? Yes, you were tired of Certainly some contact. I'm not sure so if anybody called foul? a foul. Okay, it's a contested foul. What was your count? Okay. I said six. But it, might, it was it might have been one back. So if you said six, then it would be one back. She said five, so then it would become installing six. We have a contested foul. There's a turnover and right off the restart. The observers helped to oversee the game. The only active calls they make are in and out of bounds and whether it's a score or not. Otherwise, they serve as What's mediators. Pretty cool to have yeah. basically a yeah, self-officiated so game at the highest level. The national championships here in Frisco uh, began on Thursday. 48 teams in three divisions. The best 48 teams in North America coming here to North Texas. One champion's already been crowned in the mixed division, the first title for Minneapolis Dragon Thrust, and another chance for Scandal to break. This is rather incredible to see the last two possessions for Fury have ended up with turns on throws from Alex Snyder. She didn't have any turnovers the first couple of days of this competition. And she gets a D right there to make up for it. She has back-to-back -back Ds and back-to-back -back turns. Contact there, O'Connor stepping in front of the throw from Cree Howard. Ball, ball. That's a foul. No contest. Up line throw, there's Lisa Piquetley. They'll try and get her involved here on the offense. Still in a horizontal stack, but the defense doesn't really respect the deep cut as much when they're this close to the end zone. Snyder to anyway. the Keithley. And the star from the University of California, Santa Barbara, gets the goal for San Francisco. San Francisco Fury is going to have an uphill climb to get back into this thing, but only one way you can do it, and that's one at a time. Certainly Alex Snyder very involved in this last point, as we suspected she would need to be. Lisa pitt Kafley won national championships in high school in her first year with the team, so it would be her first national championship with Fury if they can come back here. On a big weekend for Ultimate earlier, we were joined by Class of 2004 Hall of Famer Suzanne Fields, now a member of the Class of 2006, Rob Rauch. Glad to be with you today. Hey, guys, how you doing? Great to have you here, Naba. What does this weekend mean to you every year to basically bring the National Ultimate community together here at the championships? Oh, it's just uh, fabulous. Uh, it gives you a, a sense of the growth of the sport, uh, the increasing level of professionalism, uh, and it gives all of the alums who are part of the Hall of Fame a perspective on uh, just what, where their baby uh, has gone and how it's grown up. Rob Rauch, the, the president of the World Flying Disc Federation, and even the president has a story of how he started playing Ultimate. Share, us your, share with us yours. Okay, well, I started back in 76 at college. I think uh, I went to a small school in New England called Williams College. We were about the 25th college team in the country. And in those days, we started off playing barefoot and with a, a master frisbee uh, in time games with no stall counts. Uh, 
it very quickly developed in the late 70s, but uh, it was certainly a, uh, an interesting time just to see the development as uh, a player run sport. You played in uh, 11 national championship tournaments, one for, uh, what's it like to play at this high a level of competition and win at this level? You know, it's just the, uh, it's that dedication you have to do uh, to, to really get there. It's, uh, you know, the training level, I think the regimens today are even more intense than what we did, but, you know, we'd be out there uh, five days a week in practicing. The, the Nationals typically was Thanksgiving weekend in those days, and so we'd be up in New York. It's a lot colder yeah. at that time of year in New York. Yeah, I remember an awful lot of nights under the lights uh, in, in pouring sleet. The, the puddles were freezing, and you'd just be out there uh, at a three-hour practice and going through your regimen, the, uh, the drills, the uh, practicing plays, and doing the sprints, and just you have to, you have to do it to get there. Samantha McClellan's goal makes it 10-4 in favor of Washington, D.C. Probably a lot of folks out there who have never heard of WIFTIF, the World Flying Disc Federation. Tell us a little bit about the organization, its purpose, and, and, and what you do as president. Sure. The uh, WIFTIF was formed in 85 to be the international governing body for all flying disc sports. Uh, today we have 56 formal member countries. Ultimate's played in about 82 countries around the world. Uh, we, we manage a series of world championships. Uh, the first World Ultimate Championship was held in 1983 in Sweden. And uh, we now have a quadrennial cycle of uh, national world championships as well as club championships. Next summer in Italy, we'll have our World Club Championship, which we're expecting about 160 teams, uh, close to 4,000 athletes. Wow. One of the big... Uh, uh, wins for us in terms of objectives uh, was the recognition by the International Olympic Committee this last May of flying disc sports and WIFDIF. And so we are now one of 34 sports that are not a part of the Olympic program yet, but which are recognized by the IOC, which is really a, uh, an important oh, milestone for us. That was like WIFDIF championship. Did you guys pop champagne corks in the office that day? You know, we, uh, we were actually over in St. Petersburg at the annual Sport Accord meeting when they gave us the announcement. Uh, I was heading up uh, to Helsinki that night uh, and saw the previous president of WIFDIF, and so we definitely uh, did pop that champagne over a very nice dinner uh, yeah, no, to celebrate the uh, success. This is for the Summer Olympic Games, this provisional recognition. I know it was a very arduous process, hundreds of pages of documents that had to be submitted. What does it mean for the sport to gain that provisional recognition? What's the next step after that? Sure, the, uh, the provisional membership uh, recognition is really a two-year process. We will go in for permanent recognition in 2015. Uh, yeah, as I said, we are not a part of the Olympic program. That is a, an entirely different process. We would need to have 75 formal member countries uh, and a whole host of additional uh, and very political processes to go through to get there. Um, but uh, the way I look at it, we're on the bench. Uh, we're, we are a recognized member of the Olympic family. Uh, we do get some uh, support from the IOC uh, monetarily as well as uh, a, an ongoing dialogue of what it takes to really uh, maintain the best practices to be uh, a candidate for inclusion in, in the games. We've seen two tremendous Ds here from Sandy Jurgensen and now from OP Payne. Scandal will have the disc up by six. We're chatting with Nob Rouch, the president of the World Flying Disc Federation, with Diff and uh, USA Ultimate Hall of Famer inducted in 2006. That disc will fall shy of the sideline. You mentioned that many more countries play Ultimate than are officially WIFTIF members. This may be a, a real arduous question, but what, what's the process like of trying to recruit a country to officially become a member of the World Flying Disc Federation? Well, really, it's uh, just in the same way that the IOC has its membership process uh, and, and a series of guidelines of what it takes to, to be a member. We also have our, our own application process in the bar we like to set of making sure that there is a sustainable organization within the country that it has. It's not just a, uh, a, a small group of a couple dozen expats, um, but rather you really have a, an establishment uh, and something that's institutionalized is going to have staying power. And, um, you know, we, we use our uh, world championships to encourage countries to really aspire to get there and understand what it takes to, to have a, a real and viable 
ongoing association. And Snyder up line to Penny for the San Francisco goal. It's now 10-5, Washington, D.C. Great to have a former player. You competed internationally during your playing days, right? Yeah, I, I had the uh, success uh, and the uh, honor of playing in the first World Championship in 83 with Boston's Rude Boys, in 84 with Windy City in Lucerne, uh, and then in uh, 88 and 90 with New York. And uh, we're fortunately successful in each of those. You were mentioning about having a sustainable body for the sport in each country, and you were a part of formalizing what was the Ultimate Players Association and now USA Ultimate. What was it like back then to try and put things together into a really formal body? You know, it's, uh, you know when I took over, I was the fourth director of the UPA. Uh, when I was elected, I got sent a box of stuff. Uh, there were some papers from you know, letters and this and that, um, but there really wasn't a, uh, a real organization. We did have the benefit of an accountant out in uh, Silver City, Nevada, who really w kept it together. He was a, uh, uh, he did all of the membership processing with his wife at his uh, home office and uh, made sure that newsletters got delivered on time and that the membership lists were updated, but that was about it. And so. Uh, we sat down, we, uh, I, uh, you know, had called upon a good friend of mine, Brian Murphy, who's the second director of the UPA. We drafted a set of bylaws. We uh, put together an incorporation for the organization. We set up the 501c3 not-for-profit uh, standing right, uh, and, uh, and then worked sure to develop from there. So we, uh, uh, the next step was uh, having an office that we worked out of, uh, our managing director out in Long Island. Uh, gave us access to an office out there. We set up an 800 number and then made that transition in the early 90s of setting up a formal office, having a paid staffer, the first paid staffer, and, uh, and grew from there. Alden Fletcher notches the San Francisco score. They're back to within four, pending the call. Before we let you go, Nob, I need to ask you about your business card. When, we, when I met you for the first time in Raleigh, you handed me a business card which was the coolest business card I've ever received because it was actually a miniature Frisbee. How did that come about? You know, it's really funny. In the uh, Back in the 70s, it was very, very common for people to uh, print up their indiv individualized mini. And it's something that's fallen out of favor, but it really... Uh, it seems to me just to be a no-brainer, you know, as I've uh, so it was a met a score. Uh, I IOC, I uh, okay. so it's a uh, it's a uh, other federation right. presidents yeah. and the like. Oh, you know, good? it's something that's very memorable. It's, some, it's sort of a neat memento yeah. for them. And uh, oh, you know, there's, right. there's a lot from the, the early zone. days that I'm trying to bring back because in the end, uh, WAMO and the, I, you know, their, the IFA, which was their commercial arm, you know, took Frisbee from a game to sort of spreading the news and I'm almost a, a missionary uh, with a missionary zeal and, and so some of these elements you know we have to make sure we keep the fun part of it in as well. There are knob rouch mini discs all over the world from all the places you've been I'm sure. Exactly. Tournaments like this provide a great opportunity for learning about the sport. You're part of a book called Ultimate, the first four decades. Is that a, a really good resource? It seems like to me, I haven't read it, but for people who are not familiar with the sport to learn about its growth and toward the current day, how it's expanded? Oh, you know, the uh, that was a, a great project. Joe Seidler uh, had uh, imagined it. He found two good writers who were uh, Ultimate players, but also journalists to really spearhead the effort. Uh, it's, it's a very exhaustive book. What was really fun about it is that the amount of research they did really captured something that might have been lost in another 10, 20 years as people pass on. And, uh, and so uh, it really is a, uh, a, a neat book and chronicling in uh, you know, very, very detailed fashion the various steps while nonetheless telling a story along the way. And uh, I've been talking to Joe about whether he's going to be updating it for our upcoming 50th anniversary of the founding of the sport, which will be coming up in 2018. That'll coincide with the next Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony as well. And, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's neat to be Alex able to Snyder chronicle something like that before it gets lost. Big dates on the horizon for the sport of Ultimate. And Rob Rauch, a big part of the sport, member of the Hall of Fame and president of the World Flying Disc Federation. Thanks so much for your time and for your insight. Hey, guys, uh, appreciate it and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank, Thank you so you, much. You 10-5, Washington, D.C. Or rather, 10-6, Washington, D.C. on top of San Francisco. A scandal has held this lead here in the second half.
And a couple breaks from San Francisco Fury trying to regain the momentum. And a big offensive point here for Scandal. Without Octavia Payne or Sandy Jurgensen on the field. Relying on that core offensive seven. Led by Ann Mercier, the Ottawa native. Mercier's got it, the force is away. She puts it for White. Oh, it's coming, it's coming oh, in on the floor. Yeah, we got hands here. Coming in on one, the foul was early. Cool. Hey, we're set, in on one. Oh, set. Coming on one, it's on your check. White dumps it back, Kath Ratcliffe, 70 yards out. She goes through traffic to Mercier. She caught it in the end zone. Or did she? No calls. Score. And they have ruled it a score. Mercier, the unlikely recipient for the second time today. They find her to increase the advantage 11 6. Scandal up by five, four points away. If you were with us earlier today and you saw the mixed final, you may have noticed that the eighth seed from Minneapolis defeated the two seed from San Francisco. This women's final would be a bigger upset because that's how gigantic of a favorite San Francisco Fury was coming in. But Scandal really started strong and has not let up. Alicia White with a couple of goals and a trio of assists. And it's really been, from the beginning, the offense of the defensive line, which now will take the field here for Washington, D.C., as they get set to pull, that has played such a big part in it. As they've spread things out. Mercy on the offensive end. And here's Fury, the seven-time defending national champion. And, Evan, that's to further emphasize the point you made. A three-seed upsetting a one may not seem like a bigger upset, but it certainly is, given the history of Fury. In the history of Ultimate, you know, it's been Fury and Seattle Riot. I mean, it's been one and two in the top tier with Scandal and others on the outside looking in. This year, really throughout the regular season, Scandal proved to be worthy of inclusion in that top tier, but they certainly weren't above Fury at any point. 15-12 was the final in the U.S. Open Championship game in Raleigh. The last time these two teams met with Fury emerging victorious. It's off the hand of Snyder at a turn. Fury turnover. Picked up by Maddox. Such a clever, crafty lefty. What a catch by Octavia Payne. O'Connor back to Payne. Diving try at the front of the end zone. Lawrence Sadler went for it. That's turnover. Turn. Observers coming in to see if there is a foul call. I got blue on you. You really bad. Hey, um, and, well, Payne's uh, throw was coming in hard in a tough angle. Technical from play did not affect the play. But this was also down. All right, guys. So we got foul call here and down call here. To me, with both, the foul away from the play did not affect the play. No foul. The disc, restart with the check. Restart you with the check, the freeze here, freeze here. The disc is down, all right? You touch the disc, and then we're live. We're live! Ten. That's a Basically, that was an incomplete pass, and Snyder will pick up, guarded by Payne. Team USA teammates matching up.
Payne just called a travel on Snyder, I think. Travel called. Travel called. Alex Snyder, Snyder with the disc. Oh, oh, we got a mark. So, so no, She's got no, three no travels. Steps. No travel. No. Sure. Yeah. All right, ladies. When all right. We're set in with the check. <laughs> Good to see a show of sportsmanship between those two World Games teammates. Ask anybody about Octavia Payne, they'll tell you she is perhaps the most competitive player in the women's game. Up for grabs, Kayla Jorgensen comes down with it. Casey dumps back to Snyder. And that's a turf in the end zone. A close play. Your turn. Manisha Dariani, just a careless throw near the goal line. Layup bid for Christy Bowen. She was open. And it was an easy throw. Was there a foul called on the throw? Okay. Take it to me. I got it. They'll okay. discuss that, and we want to let you know that coming up, it'll be Seattle Sockeye against San Francisco Revolver for the Men's Championship 5 Eastern here in Frisco, Texas, after this game wraps up. But the foul indicates with the contact there. And the foul, meaning if I, if, if you feel like you were fouled, okay, I'm saying foul. I'm saying contest. Okay. Fury, would you like to sub? Do you want to keep it here and here, keep it like contested or bring it to me? Oh, okay. 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 There's a foul call, and it's coming to me. I'm ruling no foul. Wait, 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 wait. We have to start with the check. All right, touch the okay. ground. T yeah. Yep. The observers go. all weekend long have been very strict about restarting with a check. After the decision has been rendered, the team just wants to go, 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 go. Sometimes it feels like the observers don't necessarily need to enforce that check if everybody sort of agrees. More of a technicality than anything, but does serve a purpose to prevent a major advantage from being gained. Down the middle, in and out of the hands of Christy Bowen. Lauren Sadler with a deeper scandal. Just got enough of the disc. Still hit Bowen in the hands, but no time to react. Lauren Sadler. Hope he picks up the disc for scandal. And takes Played it collegiately out. at American, a two-time all-region in the Atlantic Coast. Evan, we look at the time right now, 3.45 and counting down on the clock. And that's toward the soft cap. It's 11-6 in favor of Washington, D.C. Scandal. Looking for the upset win here over Fury. You would almost expect coming in that the score might be the other way around, but with the wind forcing so many turns, the cap really looks like it's going to have a significant impact on what the final score is in this game. At halftime, Matt Sink did tell us it's going to be sloppy either way because of the wind. Certainly been sloppier than he'd prefer. Fury just has not been in rhythm. There's the men's bracket. San Francisco was going for the three division sweep, but Polar Bears lost in the mixed division. Fury in big trouble here in the women's division. Another San Francisco favorite to be challenged by Seattle Sockeye. Seattle going for its fourth championship, but the first in six years, the last one in 2007. Behind guys like Alex Nord and Chase Sparling Beckley. Time is running out here for Fury. There's no doubt about it. Once the soft cap goes on, that means we're 20 minutes away from the hard cap. Once the hard cap goes on, you, set? All right, you finish the point. One. If the game's not tied, the game is over. 
Payne into traffic. Tough decision there for Opie. It's a turn for Washington, D.C. Fourth straight turn for Opie. Dariani much more patient this time, made sure she had her balance. And Fury gets one back. Now just 90 seconds away from the soft cap going on. On the D there, Lauren Sadler was in pursuit. She had the final option to try and chase this down, and she slipped going toward the end zone before this last throw. So that left Christy Bowen and wide open. Fury score. That's Fury 7, Scandal 11. We talked at the top about Fury's balance in the system. Seven goals, seven different goal scorers. But it's going to need to be defense if Fury is going to turn this game around. Defense and then the capitalization on forced turnovers. Looks like Snyder's going to pull. Out there with Claire Sharman. Nancy Sun, Carolyn Finney. And a fairly Alex sloppy Claire half, nine Lord turnovers Lord. apiece. Great hustle from Finney getting down there first to take away the first throw. And now Snyder, who pulled, goes down on the girl who picked up the disc. The horn sounded. This game will not be played to 15. Soft cap will add two to the highest score after this point concludes. Great catch by Mercier. Alika Johnston guarded closely by Snyder. A straight up mark. Flip to Ratcliffe, who goes to the end zone, and a score for Washington, D.C. Jenny Fay finishes off the point, and it's a game to 14. Half Jenny Faye for the scandal. Mercy, a full extension That's layout. Keeps the point Here alive for a scandal. Centers it to Johnston. A couple fakes made Snyder bite. Dump to another handler, and then Kath Ratcliffe will do the rest to Jenny Fay in the end zone. Scandal two points away. The question we asked at the end of Washington, D.C.'s win yesterday against Wright, which was a 15-7 final, was Wood Scandal be able to re repeat that performance today? And right now, the answer is indubitably yes. Definitively yes. Alec Casquier does not seem surprised. He knew that this team could do it. But whereas Fury is known for its consistency as we take a look at the line for Fury's son, Nazarov, Finney, Sharman, Lakshmi Narayan, Oh, Alex Gesquier knows that this team has a very high ceiling, and we're seeing it this weekend in Frisco. The wind. A lot of impact on that spooky pull. Jurgensen match, matches up with Sharman. Kimberly Beach is on Liz Penny. Ball. Ryan flicked to the middle of the field. Ahead for Rudin.
Great job by Fury creating space for that in-cut from Sharman. Rudin had one of the best layouts of the season during the championship game against Scandal at the U.S. Open. Scandal has flipped the script here, though. Now Ryan had Nazarov and passed up that throw with a trailing pain. San Francisco evaluating goal line options. Cross field, that was the throw they wanted. Carolyn Finney not able to make the catch. Yuri Turner. Is this a D or a drop? That's a drop. I don't even, wouldn't even say it was a drop. It looked like Finney's hand went right over the disc. She may have felt the footsteps from Allison Maddox. That's a play Finney needs to make. A game to 14. Washington, D.C. needs just two points for their first ever national title. Jerkinson again. So smart around the sideline. Payne rips it down. Jorgensen won't catch that. That has been the connection the last two days. Payne hucking to Jorgensen. But a turn that effectively serves as a punt for the Washington, D.C. defense. Not as good of a punt as Payne would have hoped, though. Went out of bounds. Almost 20 yards from the goal line. Bullet flick to sneak it past Maddox, who had pretty good defense on the handler. There's a D. Finney's throw knocked away by Jesse O'Connor. She starts the point for Scandal. Jurgensen in the end zone all alone. One more point to go for Washington, D.C. Jesse O'Connor with the D for Scandal to create the turn. A great look of anticipation on Sandy Jurgensen's face after that score. A tough point for Finney. She had a drop in the end zone, then threw it away. O'Connor the pickup. Up line for Maddox, and a perfect put. Easy catch for Jurgensen, and let's see the look on her face. For Washington Scandal, it will be the first championship. San Francisco Fury looking for an unprecedented, us unprecedented eighth straight title. One point away from being dethroned and creating new queens in the ultimate world. She's certainly one of the queens of the day for Scandal. Sandy Jurgensen. Up 13-7. And for Alex Gesquier, one of the coaches of Washington, D.C., going for his first title in men's or women's. Last year, remember, with San Francisco Revolver. It'll be his first title in both divisions. He won a title with Revolver two years ago. He'd be the first coach to win a championship in both the men's and the women's. But last year did lose in the finals. Similar to the end of the first half, Washington DC puts on the cup the zone defense. That's down, that was down. Howard says she caught it. This is going to start with a check. Everyone freeze. My ruling is it's down. It hit first. So it's on your check. 
Could this be it for Scandal? Okay to pick up for Scandal. Payne starts the possession. And that's down. Scandal turn. She's out of bounds. Cree Howard didn't know where she was on the catch. A microcosm of how the day has gone for Fury. They've just been a little bit off. A little bit off their A game. Most days, Fury can be off their A game and can still win with their C game. Not today with the emergence of this East Coast powerhouse. And Scandal, as we said at the half, absolutely peaking at the right time. Pick call and it will get sent back to the thrower, which is actually an advantage. Gain some yards, although the stall count pretty high. Reset to Payne. Strong throw. She moves it upfield to Sadler. Now Jurgensen at the doorstep. Into the end zone. Fury's run is over. And the new champions of women's ultimate scandal from Washington, D.C. Takes a special time, kind of teamwork to take down a dynasty. Sandy Jurgensen, as big a part as anybody. And Farrenwald will covet that disc forever. Fury still with some positive looks on their faces, but it has to be a tough way for the championship reign to end. Jurgensen, a tough catch, made to look easy. And for Alex Gesquier, what a summer. The head coach of the USA World Games team that wins a gold medal in Columbia. And in his first year coaching Washington, D.C. scandal, he leads them to their first women's championship. Congratulations to him and Mike Lapresti. You can see the joy in the faces of Octavia Payne and Molly Roy, the two captains. Washington, D.C. celebrates its first championship, 14-7, ending Fury's seven straight year run. USA Ultimate National Championships are presented by the Discraft Ultrastar 175 Sport Disc, the official championship disc of USA Ultimate since 1991. The Triple Crown Tour, Ultimate's highest level of competition. Everyone's invited. USA Ultimate, the national governing body for the sport of Ultimate in the United States. To find out more about the sport of Ultimate or where to play in your community, visit www.usaultimate.org. For the next year, the title of Women's Ultimate will reside in our nation's capital. Washington, D.C. picks up a 14-7 win here today in Frisco with Evan Leppler, Mike Cousins. So the seven year reign is over for San Francisco and Washington DC puts together a great two day run to take the crown. Yeah, here on Championship Sunday, we're learning to expect the unexpected. You can't feel too sorry for Fury. They won seven straight titles. You feel really good for Scandal. Knowing what they put into this to win their first championship is pretty cool. Our Discraft Ultra Star play of the game comes courtesy of Washington DC's Sandy Jurgensen. Great body control for her throughout the entire game, including on this throw from Opie Payne. Well, the thing about Sandy is she makes the tough catches look really easy. 
and a strong thrower as well. Great diving catch there from White. And Sandy joins us now down on the sideline. First of all, congratulations on winning a championship. What's it like down there on the field for you and this team in the celebration? Oh, we are so excited. This is something we've wanted for so many years, and to finally put it together and in such decisive fashion really means a ton to us. Sandy, was there a point this season in practice or at a tournament when you guys truly grew to believe that you could win a national title and dethrone this unstoppable Fury team? I think at uh, US Open and in North Carolina early in the season when we didn't beat them, and we we really felt that we could. It, it kind of came together. Um, it was a game where we didn't feel like we gave it everything, but we knew we had it. Can you tell us about the connection that you have with Opie Payne? Because you're two of the strongest players on the defensive line, probably in the sport. And anytime she threw it up there, it seemed you were there to grab it and eventually set up a score. That's. That's all I want from Ophi. She knows I love it, and she's got amazing throws, and it's so fun to try to go for them. What did Alex Gesquier bring to this team that you may not have had last year? I think he really encouraged us to play a more aggressive game. Um, Mike is a fantastic coach, and he really knows his stuff, and Dutchie has a different kind of dynamic play, and it was great to have them um, working with each other. Sandy, thank you so much, and congratulations on a first title for Scandal. Thank you very much. What a win for Washington, D.C. as they pick up their first ever title and unseat the champion from San Francisco. A run to the finals and a win here today certainly caps off a great weekend for this team here in Frisco. You know, their semifinal win started with a Callahan, which really set the tone here in the stadium setting. Washington looked like it belonged all weekend long. It, frankly, th the sloppiest performance from D.C. was in its first game on Thursday. They were down 9-5 to Denver's Molly Brown. Alex Gesquier, Mike Lepresti called timeout. They reset, came back to win that game. And they'll head into next year, 2014, with a winning streak as well. So many different players contributed. Jurgensen, Payne, Mercier, the three studs. But, you know, Jenny Fay was big. The, the Callahan from Allison Maddox, really a team effort, just a brilliant performance. And you, you have to feel good for a team to win its first championship, knowing how hard they worked. Well, add a new name to the top of the list for women's ultimate. Not just Fury and Riot, but now Scandal making its mark here on Championship Sunday in Frisco. So for Evan Lepler, I'm Mike Cousins and our entire crew. Thanks for joining us. Our final score, Washington 14 and San Francisco at 7. To watch this game on replay, log on to WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. We say so long from Frisco, Texas.